Jones and I'm Head of Policy and Research at Social Enterprise UK. Hold on one second. Um, and I have worked there for the last almost six years. Sorry, something I... Anyone be able to work that one out? Um, and I've worked there for the last six years and what my job involves is um, persuading the government that social enterprise is a good thing, that they need to do more to promote it, but also providing a lot of practical support. We're a very small organisation and everyone has to do pretty much everything. Um, so as a result, I've spent a lot of time working with groups, doing this kind of thing, exploring ideas. Um, normally when they're a little bit more advanced than this, but still, I'm sure it will work anyway. Um, one of the things I'm hoping people might be willing to do later, um, or certainly in the next 15 minutes, is pitch ideas they may have, and then that we can work on them as a group. Um, do I have anyone with ideas who might be willing to pitch? If you could let me know. One in the back. I need more than one. No one has an idea? A gentleman over here, I have two. <coughs> I think you can do it, 60 seconds, it's a safe space, there are no wrong answers, so, okay, so I've got three, so maybe in 15 minutes you might be willing to come up and just explain your idea, just in a minute, you don't have to, ha the whole purpose of today is having the time to explore the theory using, using practical examples to bring it to life, so there are no wrong answers, and if it ends up that it's not something for a social enterprise, that's as good a learning way, way of learning as anything else. So I have three. Any more? Four? Excellent. Five. Thank you very much. Your cruel neighbour there. Yeah, but it's like, like the style. Know, yeah. it's, this is good. Um, so the first thing, if anyone wasn't here yesterday, these are the characteristics. This is what a social enterprise is. So it has a social mission that is core to its purpose. It is a business, so it generates its income through selling, through trade, through selling goods and services, so that's critical. It is on the whole non-profit distributing, that doesn't mean it's not a not-for-profit organisation, it has to make a profit, if it doesn't make a profit it doesn't survive, it can't grow, it can't scale, it can't create more impact. But it doesn't give that profit away to shareholders, it reinvests that profit in creating more social good, more social purpose creating a multiplier effect that hopefully, hopefully means that its mission is continued. And in the UK, this is quite critical because of the way that the government is involved in social enterprises, that they, they are autonomous, they are independent of the state. Many of them are um, arm's length from other bodies, but they are independent of state, that they are independent businesses. Um, I will put these back throughout the day. So as I said, today we are going to explore in more detail the su success factors shared by the best social enterprises. We're going to work on real examples and we're going to prepare some elevator pitches. Anyone who runs a business would say that you should be able to describe what you do in 60 seconds. If you have get into a lift, your elevator pitch should be that you should be able to describe what you do succinctly and clearly and people should understand it. So we're going to do a little bit of work on them as well. But this is a safe space and so no one should feel daunted. So firstly, in, on your tables there should be paper and pens if the people sitting on the edges could join tables, that might be better, because I don't think this is... Oh, they're watching their laptops, and they're not even looking. <laughs> Gentlemen at the back. <laughs> they're all right. Okay, right. <laughs> but this table only has three, and this one has a few more. Can I ask you just to get into, into groups of about five? And I want you to present back what does a successful business look like? No wrong answers. But each group is going to present back in about 10 minutes what successful businesses are. So what are the characteristics that the most successful businesses, be they social or non-social, what, what are the characteristics that they share? So what do the most successful businesses look like? So if I give you 10 minutes on your tables, and then if you could just what, uh, nominate a spokesperson on each table who's going, to pitch, who's going to share with us, the rest of us, what you think they are. And the second one? Uh, it does something that others would like to do. Okay. 
Okay, this table here? Vision. Vision. It has Why? a vision. <laughs> And the second one? Uh, the owners and the, the workers are happy. Okay. Uh, next table behind? Yes. If we look at the... I can I ask everyone to project their voices? Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> if you look at the truly social enterprises, then most of them are designed to look like they are not supposed to make any money. So that's how, how they look like. So they look like they shouldn't make money. Yeah. The most successful businesses look like they shouldn't social make money. Businesses. Okay. Okay, no, okay. If, if you are excluding the social ones, then of course it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> We'll leave it. No wrong answers, though. Another one. Another one from you. Care about people. I'm gonna add that to this one. So happy workforce, cared about workforce. Okay. Next table. They have a good reputation. Another one from you, sir? And any other ones? You don't have to? Relationships. Okay. Oh. I'm sorry, I forgot to warn you at the beginning, I have terrible, terrible handwriting. Um, this table here. <laughs> Finally, someone talks about money. <laughs> okay. Enthusiasm. Customers. In that they have them, that they care Customer. about them. Customer need demonstrated. Customer need. But I, I guess it's the same. Okay, can I move on to another table, if that's all right? I might come back to you since you have so many. Table at the back. Okay. It. Does anyone have any other ones that they have a burning desire to share? <coughs> okay. So the question was actually about all businesses, not so just social businesses, but all businesses. And if you look at this, what's really interesting is how much is about people, relationships, workforce. Something about offering something unique. We have one. Go on. Uh, how to say it? More, it gives more than uh, takes. Okay. But something about having a clear vision and strategy, which again is critical. But when we, and this isn't my idea, but this is based on a, on a number of books about what makes the best businesses. The first, which I think everyone came up with in, in different words, but is they are obsessive about their customers' needs. Meeting their customers' needs has to be absolutely central, and they are thinking about it all the time. They never stand still on their customers' needs. They're always evolving 
and innovating and meeting more customer needs. So, and I think we, we came up with that. We, customer need, who, who got that one? 10 out of 10. One is about message and branding. And I think often we forget about this when we're talking about businesses. They shape their message to fit their target market so you know that you want to buy them. They know their costs inside out and they get their pricing right. Most social enterprises that fail, they fail because they don't get a handle on their cost base. So as a result, they don't price their goods and services effectively. So getting the costing right in order to get the pricing right, knowing what your cost is so that you can then value what you're selling effectively is critical. They get their marketing mix right, and I will talk about this later. It's about the four Ps. It's about the price. It's about how do you get it to the people, but we'll talk about that in a bit more detail later. They deliver products and services to an incredibly high standard. The businesses that thrive at the moment, I don't know if you have it here, but we have a business in the UK. It's an American company called Amazon. The reason it does so well is that I can buy a book with three clicks of my mouse and it will be in my, in my workplace the next day. They absolutely have the products and service down to this high standard so that they have completely annihilated the competition because it is so much easier for me to do it with them. But they also get their marketing mix right in that they're everywhere. I can't miss them. They are absolutely dominating my psyche, so I always go if I'm going to buy a book to them. So it's about absolutely how do you get the marketing right, but how do you beat everyone else on product and, and service standards? And then if you're coming to social enterprises, that this is clear, that this can be, the social mission can be communicated, it can be articulated, and it can be measured. It's not just saying we do nice things to nice people and we're making the world a better place. You can clay, say clearly what it is and you can measure against it. And from our research, they are the characteristics make top five, pretty much the same as any other standard business, clear social mission. If I look at the best social enterprise in more detail, absolutely workforce comes in there. Um, the best ones are um, inclusive, they devolve decision making to the lowest levels of staff so that people feel very empowered when they work for them. They are transparent in how they operate. But I think that comes to the clear social mission. It's not just about saying it, it's about demonstrating it. You can, you can absolutely demonstrate how you are financially different, how you are socially different, and how you are environmentally different. And that's what the best ones do. I'm now just, I'm going to spend, don't know. Sorry, my watch is still on UK time. I haven't got around to changing it. Okay, so I've got about an hour and a half. So I'm going to go spend a little bit of time, if that's okay, if going through some of the characteristics, and then if, if everyone can prepare their pictures. So I'm probably going to talk for the next 10 minutes, and then if the pitchers, pitchers can prepare to come up after that and do their kind of 60 seconds pitch the group, and then what we're going to do is work through those pitches against what I will have been talking about for the next 10 minutes, if that's okay. Does that all make sense? getting some nods, taking that as a good sign. Um, so when we talk, and I talked about this a bit in my presentation yesterday, about how do you start planning when you're a social enterprise? What are the things that you need to consider when you're planning whether or not this is an idea that's going to work? Um, we talk about, well, my colleagues and I talk about the Magnificent Seven, mainly because we like alliteration, um, and we like, it sounds snappy. But the, the first has got to be mission, then your market, who's your com competition, who are your stakeholders, who's going to buy it, money, who will pay for what you do, measurement, how do you know if you're successful, management, do you have the right skills, if not, how can you get them, marketing, which is about do you have the right product, is it at the right price, is it at the right place, can people find it, can they buy it? Um, it's all very well having a nice product, but if you don't have the distribution channels to get it to me, then I'm never going to be able to buy it. And promotion. How are you distinguishing yourself in the market? And all together, these make the master plan. So this is what we are going to work through against the pitches today. But we probably won't get into the detail of management because we're talking a little bit more in the, in, in, in the abstract. And we won't get through them all in detail. But basically what we want everyone to be able to work through on the pitches is to be able to kind of answer the questions, the mission, and the mission, vision, mission, val uh, and, and goals, 
The mission is the more tangible. What am I selling? What am I, it, it's, the, it's the more concrete of those. Um, what will my business sell? Who will it benefit? And preparing the elevator pitch. So that's what we're going to go through later. But I'm going to start by going through some of these. So the mission. Why does it matter? Firstly, it distinguishes you. If you're a social enterprise rather than a private enterprise, your mission is what distinguishes you. It distinguishes you from having a purely financial motive. It's absolutely crucial for planning and evaluating whether or not you're being successful. That it is smart, that it's succinct, that you can measure against it is critical. Otherwise, how do you know whether you're achieving? How do you know whether you're on purpose? How do you avoid mission drift? So how do you avoid moving in a direction that isn't critical to your organization? How do you convince your staff that they're working for a different kind of organization if you don't have a very clear mission that you can articulate? And then how is that, what does that mean in reality? So what does it mean to work for a social enterprise as opposed to a, a, a private enterprise? If you can't articulate your mission, then how do people even know that there, there is something different about it? And therefore, how can you get so much more out of your people? Um, again, with your stakeholders, if you, are a, if you have stakeholders who are people who, serve, who use your services, if you're supporting homeless people or young people or elderly people, how do they know that you, what you are about as an organization and, and how you're different? And then again, like I said, it can avoid drift, mission drift. It can help you decide whether or not you should follow this avenue or this avenue because you relate it back to that vision and you always know what that's about. So if we're working out what our mission is, normally these are the kind of things that we, we want to ask ourselves. So what's the big idea? What is it we're trying to do? What are the methods that you're going to use and with who? What are your products and services? In what number? Where? And what makes it new and different? They're the kind of questions, and there are many more. They're the kind of questions you need to start asking yourself when you're talking about organization's mission. Um, my colleague Nick loves this slide. You can't read the label of the jar you're in. And it's about saying, just because you think there's a market out there, doesn't mean there is a market out there. Just because you think this is a brilliant idea doesn't mean actually anyone else does or, or is willing to buy it. It's very easy to be quite insular, that you think this is the best idea in the world and it's going to solve every problem we have, or certainly some problems. But actually, until you go out there and test it, and test the market that you're looking to operate within, you don't necessarily know that it's going to work. So this is about making sure that you're testing your market. And again, that's part of what today is about. It gives you the opportunity to bounce the five of you that are going to pitch, to bounce your ideas off different people in the room, hopefully people you've never met before, people who might have a different range of skills. It gives you the opportunity to do that. In fact, to the whole floor at the end of the day. I talked about this yesterday. So is there, as I said, is there a need for what you what you're about to provide. Who are your stakeholders and who are your competitors? So as I said, just because you think there's a market for what you are about to sell doesn't mean there necessarily is. This is something called the mission money matrix. And again, I, we won't go into this in very much detail. But I think often with social enterprises, because you're trying to balance the social and the financial, in a way you have a much harder time determining where your priority should sit, and, and what you should do. So often, you can be incredibly on mission, but actually, it's not revenue generating. Um, so if you're down here, and it's off mission, and it doesn't bring in money, you really don't want to go there. If you find that you have a product that could generate some really nice revenues, but actually, there's a danger that it is actually against your mission and could create detrimental uh, effects to your mission. Again, you may want to go there because you may be able to use the revenues in a, in a, in a social way, but it's somewhere where you have to be careful. You will probably only want to proceed with caution. We find that most social enterprises, <coughs> they do a lot here. They do an awful lot in the, in the less money, some money, but not less money, but on mission. But really, this is where you want to be. You want to be in the area where you're contributing to your organization's mission 
and you're generating the revenues. It's a very hard square to get into. Think about our organisation. What do we want to do? We want to support social enterprise. We want to create, support it thrive. We want a world where social enterprise is fully understood, that people are choosing it as a business model of choice. Now, there are things I can do that make me more money. I can go and present to banks and corporates about social enterprise, generates a, a much higher fee, or I can come here and I can talk to people who are really excited and passionate about it. Now, one probably is here, and one is probably there. And finding the, work, the stuff that's here is really difficult to do. Because my social mission is to encourage as many people as possible <coughs> to know about social enterprise. But obviously, I also have to generate my revenue. So it's always a balancing act for social enterprises. I have a transport company that I do an awful lot of work with. They are a, a bus provider. But they also provide uh, mobility for, um, and transport solutions for people who have disabilities, people who are socially isolated, elderly people. Now, they make all their money off their mainstream bus contracts, but they cross-subsidize that by delivering <coughs> extra services to people who disadvantage. They are always having to balance the line between how much of the purely commercial bus routes do they deliver in order to balance the social mission of what they're trying to achieve. It's always a fine line. So this is the matrix that can help you veer that course so that you know where the majority of your activity should be taking place. Um, this one is a bit complicated. I'm not going to go through it. We talk, obviously the finances, we're not going to get into much detail today. We don't have enough time. But the other bottom line is the social bottom line. And this is where the impact from, um, measurement is critical. So how do you prove what you do in order to improve what you do? If you're not measuring the impact of what you do, you cannot keep evolving and getting better at it. So proving what you do in order to improve it but also, how do you know that you're making a difference? How can you articulate whether or not you're making a difference? Sorry, go team. Often when you're starting out, it's one person or two per people. So the, the concept of getting the right management in place is quite an academic question when you're at the earlier stages. Um, but I think it's still important to know that you can get a lot of support from other people. There are often people willing to contribute their time for free, there's pro bono support, you've got friends and family. I think it's mainly about, at the beginning, when you're starting out, asking for help wherever you can get it. Don't say no, ever say no to free advice. There's lots of it around, and, and, and take it where you can. I covered this one a little bit earlier, but sales and marketing, the four Ps. The product, the price, the place, and the promotion. So. What is it that you are offering? What is your product? Price. What do you need to generate price-wise? What can you charge? And again, this is difficult. What, can I, what do I need to charge in order to get my returns back, to cover my costs? But actually, what is the value of what I'm doing? What can I charge? And again, a difficult balance to get for social enterprises. Place, so where am I going to buy it? Where, how do I ensure that the customer can access it? So is it, is it web-based? Is it shops? What are my distribution? How do I get it to the people who might want to buy it? Promotion, how are you going to encourage your customers to buy your products? And then finally, remembering that everyone who works for you is in sales. It's, an, it's a motto we have within our organization that we are all, always selling. Because we're only 14 people. It's not one person's job to recruit members for our organization. It's everyone's job to recruit members for our organization. Whenever we go out, we are, should be recruiting members for our organization. Everyone is in service. <coughs> and then your master plan. But we're not going to go there. So can I have my pictures? Can I have my first picture? God. You are the last up. Really, you should be you. <laughs> Up you come. I'll try it. Mm -hmm. um, Do you want to come up to the front so oh, everyone can see okay. if that's all right, if that's okay. not too daunting? Okay. Um, we have a very young company, about half a year, and we are dealing with communication, if I say so. Uh, we are communication trainers for, uh, for parents, for children, and for couples. And we are thinking what 
are our products? Uh, only communication or uh, something else also? Because when the training is in the end, the real life is coming. The real life is coming. And we want to do uh, our products or, or services in this way that uh, after this uh, training also happens something. Okay. Shortly. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next pitch, please. Okay. Sorry, you might want to say your name this time, sorry. Ivo. Ivo. That's what I can say. Good morning, everybody. My name is Ajay Sharma. I am with Molto Prabhupada in Helsinki. Yes, um, order, please. My name is Ajay Sharma. I am from Helsinki, Molto Prabhupada. I will start up. Yeah. I have an idea of uh, sharing your style on the internet. And of sharing your, sorry? Sharing your style ah. on the internet. And this gives an opportunity for everybody to be a brand ambassador of any any company you follow. Mm -hmm. you know? And it also helps to identify you locally and then promote your style online on the internet. Mm -hmm. So we have like various categories in this. It's still in the prototype phase. So like Can you speak up just a little bit for us in the back? Yeah, this, this is still in the prototype stage and we have various categories like the most popular style is listed in the front, and based on its likes, it gets popular. And there are categories like new category, party wear, businesses, and casuals, so, and other categories. Thank you very much. Who's next? I'm a little bit um, more struggling with the business side of it, a lot of the social side of it. Very so common situation to be in. <laughs> um, mostly, uh, people are ignorant about what is going on around them in, in regard to petty crime, which is uh, like bike theft and thefts of your phone. And you don't really know whether in the cafeteria you're sitting in and sipping your coffee, um, maybe there was a theft that the day before, maybe there was two thefts, thefts meaning either phones or wallets were stolen the day before you were visiting that place. So you're pretty much really ignorant about what happens around you. And especially um, people don't have the information. So police doesn't give them information about what is going on in their neighborhood. And if you don't really search this information, it's not obtainable. The second thing is, low <coughs> maintenance, meaning for example if you walk in the old town, which is really nice and it looks beautiful, but at the same time you have to keep in mind that on the roofs there's a lot of snow. It can fall <coughs> on your head and cause a lot of injuries. And people just, if you don't look high up, you don't see it. But um, my idea or the social part of it is, is kind of mapping out all the safety risks. So this is, uh, the, the need is actually security or personal security for your kids, for yourself. Uh, the business side is a little bit shaky because um, first of all, you can visualize the data, but who is interested in purchasing visualized data? Not really many people. But if, for example, you, s you try to uh, find real estate or you choose your no new home for your kids or a school or a, you book a hotel in a foreign country, then you might be interested in this kind of data, that you want to maybe identify the safety risks for this area where you're, you yourself go or your kids go. So the, the business side is a little bit shaky, but um, could be developed if people could be or are interested in this kind of data, or data analysis or visualization. Thank you very much. Okay, gentleman here, and then I think it was the lady over there. <laughs> uh, I'm all like 
this is Ronald. Uh, our idea is a social network uh, slash platform for waste management and related uh, services. And um, the problem we're trying to solve with it is obvious the environment because there's uh, most most of the garbage goes to the landfills and uh, some of it is burned and so on. Um, also, it's uh, a problem of um, health and poverty in third world countries where there are towns and cities where, for example, kids and adults burn copper wires and all kinds of stuff to get um, all of some, some of the waste uh, that they could sell. So these are heavily polluted areas. Uh, there is absolute, absolute toxic there. And another uh, problem is uh, lack of transparency in waste management. Uh, which uh, is a problem because uh, the in infrastructure is pretty weak. There are uh, waste uh, management services that aren't communicating with each other and uh, uh, well, it's fi financially bad and environmentally. Uh, and how we're going to solve these problems is by mapping uh, all the, the sector, um, like all the services and uh, uh, waste owners uh, want to get rid of the waste. And also by enabling communication and collaboration between all those services and uh, waste owners and the money side would be a waste marketplace uh, for example there could be ads because some, some of the waste uh, has value it can be sold to some recycling centers and so on so that's basically the idea okay Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Tuovi, and I'm from Helsinki. And we have just an idea, but no more yet. And our mission is to save the world. <laughs> uh, like the ambition. Yes, uh, a little bit. But uh, <coughs> more exact, our mission is to save the natural resources and and also make uh, life more fun, maybe, and more easy and also save uh, money for normal people who like to make handicrafts. So we have this kind of idea that uh, despite of that, people own all the stuff they need, all the machines they need when they do something in their hands. Mm -hmm. There may be the places where you can uh, go and there are all the machines, like, like the sport teams are. You don't need all the machines in the, in the sauna room in your home, but you can go to the, the gym, so you can go to the craft gym and have all the machines there and maybe somebody who also gives you advice. That's okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Can you can. I was not prepared, but <laughs> Thank you very much. Hi, my, name? Uh, my name is Eero and I'm from lookforcare.com, which has the Estonian name Bastehoid. Net, and um, we want to help um, the mothers and the, the families, more generally, of uh, Europe um, to find the best um, babysitter, home tutor, 
or, or generally somebody to help at their home uh, so that the, the mothers can work if they need or, or stay at home. And we also want to uh, help the, uh, the babysitters or the tutors find the best families to work at, also the, the, the au pairs. So we're creating a marketplace where, where um, uh, both the, the care providers and the families can be comparable, rateable, um, establish the, the, the trust relationship, um, and find each other. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, so that is six ideas, and, and judging by the number of you, we could just work on all six of them, because I think there are enough people that we can create groups of about five per idea. Or you could vote on the ones that you want to do, but actually I think it's probably best that we actually go with all of them, because I think generally with these things you want about five people in a group, and I think we're about 30 in the room. So if I could ask you to, the people who picked to stand up, and everyone to go and find uh, the pitch that they might like to work on. Um, and if we could have a little bit of rejigging. And try not to sit next to the people who you already know. Um, but yes, yeah, so if everyone else could go to a table with someone who's pitched on it. And then I'll tell you what we're going to do next. Well, if you already know each other and you've already discussed it, then you might get extra value if you are maybe talking to someone else. But it's okay for a couple of you to stay together, but if you all know each other. But if you don't, if you've never met before, then it's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Then. Hello. Oh, hold on, everyone. We have another someone who wants to pitch. Everyone sit down again. This is good. This is way more pitching than I expected. Sorry, everyone. Can I ask you just to take a seat for one second? I was preemptive. Is it you? Thank you. Sorry. If you could just listen to one more pitch, please. I will take one minute of your time. Thank you. So. I just want to try the pitching part as well. Uh, hello, my name is Daniel uh, and I'm from Garg, which is an NGO in England. It's called uh, The Hive. And uh, uh, about social entrepreneurship, uh, we're focusing on social activity after all, uh, overall. So, which means that uh, we're trying to uh, provoke uh, volunteership work and make it visible. Uh, and. Uh, kind of uh, make it a lot more like promote the lifestyle of uh, doing something for the mission. As well, we are trying to connect uh, all the NGOs and uh, social enterprises, uh, which, are, which are not focusing on making money, but rather focusing on the mission and are in lack of resources. We're trying to connect them and uh, help them. And we're creating a platform over the internet for this. And, uh, this more specific uh, work, but uh, which would be about project management and uh, promoting volunteership, and uh, this will hopefully help us to create a better society, <laughs> which uh, which has values more than money. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. So to recap on the ideas, we have family communication over here. Is that fair, right? A product called Style Share. Somewhere over at the back, petty crime, information and data analysis in the back corner, waste management over here, natural resources, collective handicrafts over here, connecting babysitting and tutors with families over there. Okay and The Hive, promoting social entrepreneurship. It certainly sounds like you've been having some interesting conversations. Um, we've got about 25 minutes now, and what I was hoping we could do is that someone from each group could present through their idea and, and the kind of discussions they've been having, particularly looking at these, these three questions. And then the, the rest of the group can ask questions and we can, we can discuss it as a, as a whole group. So, do I have a volunteer to go first? 
thinking this gentleman at the front is nearest, so I, I may have to volunteer him. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, forgot, we forgot about the question. Ah, sorry. so we just discussed. That's okay. Um, we had, so back to look for care, um, which is um, a way to find um, uh, a nanny, a babysitter, or a home tutor for your family, for your kids. And um, what are we trying to achieve? Is business the best way to do it? Uh, here, we didn't really discuss this, but as a sh short story, I, get, I can tell you that we did. It was a totally free website as, a, as a, the project started as a, just a, a benefit, a weekend hackathon thing to, to see, if, um, you know, to, to help out the community. Uh, and then these requests started pouring in because it got popular. Um, people started asking for more features for more trustworthiness um, and and the only way to go about it was to sit down and say okay this is, we, we, we can we don't find these resources just you know by by voluntary work we have to make it a business uh, and, and people luckily were totally happy to to start contributing the, the customers um, were, were happy to pay for things so yes business seems to be the best way to do it and um, uh, what uh, do we already sell to who? We, um, we currently sell so a, a monthly membership type uh, of thing for uh, both the nannies and both the caregivers and the families um, can purchase it, which, which helps them connect better. It's, it's, it's one or the other who we, who we currently charge. This was um, uh, what, what we had a great discussion about in the group here at the front was the was this social mission that we really, we, we have been kind of struggling with it um, a, a little bit, trying to figure out is it just a business or is it a, is it a social business because it's a social arena that we operate in or is it a social business because there is lasting change that we make mm -hmm. to, the, to the community. And, um, and, and certainly we're trying to, I mean, it's, it's not a clear cut case yet, so we're trying to figure it out if it, if the end result is that the mothers are less stressed and the, um, <coughs> and the children grow up to be better citizens because um, uh, they, you know, they don't feel abandoned, they have somebody to take care of, the, the perfectly suitable nanny or the babysitter or tutor to, um, to take care of them and, um, and there's more work around for the, for the nannies and tutors. Uh, it will be a better society. So it's a very big overarching goal, but it is something to aim for. And then the other, um, very briefly, uh, thing that we, we discussed was, was there was this um, common feature of a lot of the social businesses of, of, um, of uh, um, giving the profit back to uh, a, a good cause if there, if we ever get yep. to the profitable <laughs> stage. Which the if is very high. important there. <laughs> And, and we, so we wish to, by, by growing um, um, beyond Estonia, which, which is where we're in now, uh, we, we help to grow to the size where we can be profitable. Uh, and then the things that we could do, uh, with the, the first things that, that come to mind is, is again, um, improving um, the licensing and, and the general level of, uh, of um, of the babysitters and, and of the tutors. But for example, we have a, a problem here, I don't know if it applies abroad, is, is there are too few babysitters that are officially licensed. So it's, it's, a, it's a process that, that takes work. It's a little bit of a gray market in the sense that, not that it's dodgy, but people just like to pay cash to the, uh, to the babysitter. So the more we can take it, they, if we can make it easier to be legal in that business, yep. and if we can make it, um, um, cheaper to cover the administrative cost, all that is, is a great benefit to society. So we would like to be active okay. in that. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anyone from the floor have any questions? If you want to sign up, it's yeah. look for a Or oh, anyone need a babysitter? <laughs> okay. Um, my next group, would you like to come back up? Trying to achieve 
I think that we are trying to achieve that relations were simple. Relationships are simple. Relations, relationships or relations are simple. And I think that, uh, yes, business is the best way to do it because we have a very big market. <laughs> we, we might need a little more, little more information then. <laughs> yes, Why is business the best way to do it? Uh, because, um, why? Okay, why is business? So, who are you, what are you going to sell and who's going to buy it? Yes, uh, we are going to sell um, uh, mobile games. Mobile games. Mobile games, internet games or computer games. Yep. And uh, if they're uh, very, how to say it, uh, not internet people, so the simple games that are made uh, from paper plastics. And uh, to who? Yeah. To parents, to uh, people, in relations. We all are in relations, and uh, what will the benefit, or, or who will benefit? Uh, parents, government, municipality, local municipality. Okay. So. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions from the floor? <coughs> yes. What do you mean relations? I can be in a relationship with my enemy. Like Very good point. Uh, yes, uh, we mean with relations uh, with other people, but of course you can be in relations with your enemy, uh, with your enemy also. So uh, if you uh, learn it, you can understand why you are in conflict with your enemy. How would you how do you achieve that? Oh, it's it's a it's a harder question, but I think that we achieve that. <laughs> because basically we are thinking that relations are very hard. Are you talking about relationships? Relationships or? and relations also. No, it's the English again, so I think it's good. Erin knows me about what I do matter. Relationships, yes. With parents, with children, with other people. Yeah. Okay. It seems hard, but uh, I think that if we are communicating that uh, we want to uh, make the, uh, solutions that relationships were easier. Yep. It has a point. Okay. Yes? Sorry, uh, uh, how is it different? Or why is it different? Uh, we hope to uh, offer simple or easy uh, uh, solutions. Yeah. What it is is different. Uh, is a different thing, because of course we have in everyday psychologists or or, or, or therapists and so on. But uh, this is um, usually very uh, hard way. People are uh, are. Uh, uh, understanding it uh, as a hard way, but uh, there is a simple way also. Yes? Do you already have these games ready? No, but almost already. We have <laughs> testing ideas. Okay. okay. Can you play together with your kids? To somebody or to kids or in the, inter in the internet uh, for your own? Alone? Okay. With computer? If I'm fighting with my spouse, yes, my yes. <laughs> I think it's one where you probably have to see it a bit to really get it. But I like I like the thinking behind it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. This group over here. He's coming up. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
situation where I have a certain amount of waste and uh, in the market of, uh, uh, of Estonia there are some uh, big uh, waste management companies um, that are surrounding me and um, I don't have much choice to, to decide on what conditions I want to get rid of my waste and uh, I find that um, something needs to be done to, to, to increase this uh, competitiveness in the market. And also, mm, I see that uh, a lot of waste is uh, being um, moved uh, internationally. I see that uh, certain countries are importing waste, for example Sweden, and, and on the other hand uh, some countries are, are exporting the waste. It's the, they have too much waste and uh, it's uh, cheaper for them to, to send it uh, to other countries than uh, landfill it in, in their own country. And, um, I believe that uh, this this kind of platform would uh, make the whole global market uh, more visible, and uh, and also it uh, gives uh, opportunity to make uh, your waste uh, more attractive because um, you can cooperate with, uh, for example companies who produce the, the same type of waste you are producing and therefore you can uh, uh, combine. sell it, combine your waste mm -hmm. and, and uh, you can uh, then have better conditions to, to get rid of it because it's more attractive to the waste management companies. You want to draw the image because it, it was a concrete way of explaining the situation? Yeah. Um, I visualize it, it like um, like this. Let's say you are here, and um, you are somehow in a circle, and around you there are few big companies, and uh, you don't have much choice um, to, to find. Uh, better con conditions to, to get rid of the waste. So you use the waste wall to, to look outside the circle. And uh, in the case of Estonia, maybe you'll find uh, better opportunities in, in Latvia, in Finland, something like this. <coughs> uh, did you say that you 
working in a small uh, non-profit uh, waste management facility. Yeah. It's like a, a mun municipality owned uh, yeah. non-profit. Got you. So who is going to buy it? What's the transaction that's going to happen? Yes, so uh, as uh, we came to conclude that this is a free service that will be financed by offering an advertising platform for uh, these operators in the sector. So you have an example about how a waste management uh, a company that makes machines for crushing waste or something like that, they, they, through this platform they have this niche uh, kind of audience yep. to market their service or product or whatever. At, in the beginning well, of this. Like uh, different types of machinery could be sold exactly for waste management companies. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions from the floor? And uh, still about the benefits. Yes. Uh, uh, they, they benefit obviously the society by making waste management more efficient and uh, uh, so on, but also the whole sector in itself, like the waste management community. It's, it's uh, more it's also optimized yep. uh, for businesses as well. Okay, so it makes them more efficient. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> Who's next? Table at the back? Oh, no, hold on. We'll go. Style share. Okay. They're doing the next session. They're allowed to leave. Okay. What are you trying to achieve? And is business the best way to do it? Yeah. What are they manufacturing of? Manufacturing of clothes or anything. Okay. Any, any brand could be any product. And we are trying to reduce the cost, like uh, uh, advertising costs, uh, wholesalers or retailers. So if, if a product costs around 2 euros, mm -hmm. by the time the people are consuming, it's around 10 euros. So we are trying to reduce the gap between the consumer and the manufacturer. And the benefit ultimately goes to the end user. Just trying to eliminate the middleman. And, and how are you going to do that? It's basically we will help people interact with you. Okay. When a person tweets about a particular brand, mm -hmm. and the brand uh, would be uh, the company would be independent. That the person is wearing it, is selling the word across, and reducing the advertising cost. Transportation cost and other costs. Got it. So, over a period of time, we we'll basically sell the infrastructure to the companies who are interested and who want to leverage on the existing uh, uh, development we have done. This will basically foster a template for any social media apps that they can use the same uh, code. And the benefit would be both the user and the manufacturers. Both would be benefited cost wise. Cost wise. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why is it a social enterprise? Why social enterprise? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably why you have to work on the social. <laughs> yeah, I'm not able to get the exact but uh, what Yeah. So, what is the. It sounds like a great business idea, but why would you choose to do it as a social business and not just as a standard business? Because you're, you're creating better channels between manufacturers and consumers, which a lot of other businesses would say they do in different ways. So why, what is your social mission? 
social conditioning is basically uh, have both the math challenges, okay. but we haven't got to the level where we can yep. think of it. It's no problem. It's a traditional. It's only been half an hour. It's okay. So <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we still haven't figured out whether it's a traditional or oh, yeah. no social. But fair we, enough. Over a period of time, we'll try to integrate. No worries. No worries. Thank you very much. Now the lady in the back. Crime data. <laughs> Crime data. <laughs> okay. Have worse handwriting than me. Okay. But the question whether business is the best way to do it, we really couldn't solve it. The only way I could um, describe it is there is. <laughs> okay. There is no better way to to achieve this. So if we draw a triangular shape and we say that business is just one alternative, the other is charity and public sector. And I think um, at the moment already charity in the, in the form of Neighborhood Watch, for example, is approaching this matter. But charity, as we all know, just depends on donations and yeah. it might not be the best way to address or achieve what am I trying to achieve? So it's something to sort of make all of this to cooperate um, in order for the individual who is to benefit from this, to feel more secure, plus to be able to um, address the issue of, like, I want to be more se secure, okay. and to minimize the safety risk, and plus to report easily of the concerns regarding safety risks. So we were um, talking about and thinking about what will this um, company sell. And we um, could identify this data analysis, for example, for buyers of real estate, kind of like safety index. Yeah. Um, then advertisements for security companies and safety products uh, producers. OK, similar to the waste mm -hmm. people. Um, also, safety improving products that you could also this company could sell those products, not only ad advertise. Um, plus consultations, for example, uh, for locations or, or establishments, for example, as you said, hotels or restaurants, which have a low safety index, that they actually experience a lot of thefts. Um, plus, um, one of the things that <coughs> neighborhood, <coughs> neighborhood Watch doesn't do at this very moment is, and what, um, community unions try, are trying to do is litigate against both public sector business and not, not charity, but public sector and business regarding safety concerns. For example, if there's uh, too much noise from the um, entertainment industry and you desperately want to sleep, then you litigate against the business to keep the noise level down. Uh, plus you could litigate with the public sector, with a city that, who doesn't Main, uh, maintain order on the streets or doesn't maintain a good um, like that the streets are clean and and things are taken care of so one of the things that this company could also offer is consultation like how to approach the problem and how to solve and resolve the issues okay so and um, what who will benefit is actually like each individual who does experience safety risk and one of the things like the slogan or the slogan of the company could be childproof in the universe. Nice. Jumped ahead to marketing already. Excellent. Um, does anyone have any questions from the floor? Uh, One over here. How do we get the data? From you. <laughs> but, uh, why am I motivated to give that data? Don't you want to go out to be safe? <laughs> well, 
as one person doesn't have the, uh, maybe the energy and the power to actually resolve this issue, jointly as a corporate, if we cooperate, we could actually have an impact. So if you send in the report about what happened to you, for example, if your bike gets stolen, you desperately want some, some person to report what they have seen. Did you see my bike stolen? Did you see somebody, you know, suspicious moving around here? So you want other people to cooperate if it happens to you. So you should cooperate with other people if it happens to them. That's my Question over here. How can you make sure that the data doesn't get manipulated in a wrong way? Well, in order to uh, report data, you, you do have to a little bit identify yourself. So it's not like then be comment on this commentary. I think that's quite far advanced. Yeah. We're in the early stages of business planning. Firewalls and how you're protecting your data, that's definitely level three. Um, does anyone else have any questions? But I have, uh, would it make uh, the world scarier? Because if you, nowadays you just walk in, in uh, ignorance through the streets the and you assume it's safe. <laughs> when you hide behind the wheel of ignorance, you actually let the safety concerns evolve into a, like a big problem. If there's a mole on your foot, you should take care of it. <laughs> Instead of ignoring the same safety. Like the analogy. <laughs> right, thank you very much. Okay, who um, hasn't gone? Table in the middle. <laughs> Is there anyone else that hasn't gone yet? You guys. Handicraft. Uh, this one first and then we'll come to you guys. Okay. trying to achieve is to connect different NGOs and uh, uh, this kind of organizations with each other. Uh, we want to visualize uh, their work that they have done for the society and uh, how they have collaborated and co-worked. Uh, then we are trying to visualize the uh, volunteers' work and we want to give it some recognition people would see what they have done. Uh, through this we are we want to have a, a database uh, which, which has all the active uh, people in it and uh, and the database which visualizes as well the organizations and how they are connected with each other. So uh, the social mission <laughs> it is true proves it's only social actually. Uh, we're trying to simplify the different uh, areas uh, uh, we were trying to simplify the discovering of different areas for uh, volunteers and people who are not yet volunteers uh, can jump in as well uh, through different projects and uh, uh, through this uh, they will uh, uh, find some work maybe because they will, will be more trustworthy and they will build up an alternative uh, 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 career model curriculum uh, vitae, you know what you have done you, you, everyone will see it and uh, every person will be identified through first through Facebook or some way as well so this is the very important part but um, and, and also uh, huge stress will go to uh, gamification of doing this work so uh, kind of trying to uh, make it more fun has any one of you used Foursquare? Mm -hmm. Kind of the same thing, but we want to do it uh, by, if you do work, you get uh, this uh, kind of vir virtual uh, recognition uh, and uh, possibility to, to show your friends that I had done this volunteer work or so on. So it's, uh, it's a CV for showing it uh, for maybe, if you want to go, maybe 
do some uh, work in uh, Africa, <laughs> you can show you uh, that organization that who, who you're trying to go with. That. Look, I've done so many good things in Estonia, now I want to go abroad. And at the same time, we will uh, keep track of all the work that has been done and also who has the work been given by. So uh, it's uh, kind of like show up place for uh, NGOs and who are also people. interested in uh, combining. Basically, it's, it's, we want to make people aware of each other's uh, ex existence and knowing that uh, and and th that the record of doing volunteer work stays. Yeah. It's usually very often that you have a 20, 30 people coming to help you. You remember them at that time, but uh, you will forget them maybe a few months later. So we want the organization to have a chance to keep track of their uh, volunteer people who have helped them during the time. And maybe then hire project management based on more active people. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so the last question maybe uh, benefit. <laughs> okay, this still that uh, that the benefit would be that the resources of uh, people would be directed to more socially uh, beneficial activities because this is our focus. The more the good deeds than the money making deeds. Just you know, it's just. Uh, Kind of thing, <laughs> and uh, this will benefit in happier people and healthier uh, societies. So, uh, and uh, more, uh, uh, it's more, and we make it more easier to find work yeah, for young people. We, we do it. We want to do it so simple and dumb, that uh, it's uh, and, but, but, and to make it socially active, we will create a gamified system of uh, points, leaderboards, and badges. So. Of course. Of yeah. okay. Element of competition. Uh, one thing we had a question uh, in the group about uh, uh, what does it give to the organizations? What are we offering to them exactly? So I would say we will uh, offer them uh, trustworthy uh, uh, workers database. Uh, uh, we will also, as well we will offer uh, <laughs> advertising, <laughs> advertising, <laughs> advertising uh, and. Uh, and uh, project management uh, hardware, you can say, and project management and recruiting hardware. Okay. Software. Software. I'm afraid we're getting short on time, yeah. so I'm actually going to ask this group to come up next if that's all right. But thank you very much, guys. design the service uh, open enough and, and uh, think bigger, make really something new. There is a communi community uh, community service available like this, but it's very limited. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite tight and we want to make it, make it, make it bigger. Uh, as said, we are ser selling services. <coughs> we are also selling instructions. Uh, kind of like personal trainer services to, to this area. 
meaning that there is there is someone who will teach you how to how to do this stuff. And uh, we believe there is a clear need, uh, obviously, for handcraft freaks, but because <laughs> we will we know that these these guys will will overuse the service. They will uh, they will use <laughs> in spot every night. Our primary target group is just regular people who actually never did this before. People who want to learn something new. That's our primary target group. And the social angle to this is uh, obviously the, the um, <coughs> result we are making out of the company. We recycle it back to the company and make it bigger. And also, uh, also as part of the community, help to help to help in connecting people in the social arena. Yep. Uh, another very important uh, angle is the material. Mm -hmm. We have a big machine, uh, a company that recycles everything pretty much. We we get a big help with material from there. Okay. So Thank you very much. Um, there is in in London. Um, craft centers are becoming incredibly trendy. There's an organization called the Make Lounge. They are doing incredibly well, uh, making handicraft trendy again. They're everywhere. Um, people go and they learn how to make a cushion or a lampshade or a, you know, simple things like this, and it really is taking off. They, I mean, they're everywhere. They're popping up all over the time. You must today. It's called the Make Lounge. It's the best one I know of, but it, yeah, they're everywhere, aren't they? Yeah. But, so I think I think you may have something there. So <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. Is anyone anyone else left to pitch? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, that's the end of my bit for today. Um, all of my slides are going to be sent out to you. The ones I did yesterday and and the ones I did today. Um, there is also a guide on our website which I will send the link to. Um, called Start Your Social Enterprise. Some of it is very UK specific, the legal structures and things, but a lot of it isn't. A lot of it is, is could be applied anywhere in the world. So I'll send the link to that as well. Um, but I just really wanted to say thank you very much. It's been a really enjoyable meeting. Um, I've, it's been great to meet you all and have some really interesting ideas. Um, I hope at least some of them come off and we end up with some fantastic new social enterprises. But um, I believe you're going to take the ideas a little bit further in the next session that's, that's coming on. So, but I will leave them to explain that part. But thank you very much. <laughs>